the Best Docs Network helps you find some of the best doctors utilizing the latest procedures and practices in healthcare. Actual patients and the doctors themselves walk you through their stories that together help you make the best decision in your search for the right doctor. On today's episode, ENT surgeon Dr. C.T. Wynn talks about how he treats those with post-nasal drip and deviated septums. Clinical psychologist Dr. Collins Hodges talks about the therapeutic techniques he uses to help children and adolescents. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. Yadro Duchik discusses the importance of good skin care for his patients. Oral surgeon Dr. Paul Metz reconstructs his patient's jaw and doctors from Forest Park Medical Center utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. My biggest problem was that I got several allergies. I couldn't breathe. I was snoring at night. I was sneezing a lot during the mornings when I woke up. And I was always having a nose discharge. Irma is a, a young professional who came to see me because she can't breathe through her nose. She's, she has this chronic problem that never went away. Uh, she consulted many doctors and all she got was a you know, prescription of antibiotics and that's it. Uh, since I was a child, I had that problem. I've been treated for, for allergies. I get better for a specific periods of time, but I travel a lot. I travel internationally. So it's different pollens and different uh, trees or the landscape is totally different. So I, I couldn't find a solution. Doctors has treated Emma's problem with multiple course of antibiotics. I see this condition all the time. Patient has been treated with antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. The problem is that antibiotics may improve your symptoms, but it will mask the cause of the problem. He explains you everything. He shows you, you know, like with endoscopy, he was, I could see my nose inside. I saw where parts were infected, and he was telling me what, what he can do for me and what would be the results. Decide upon a plan of treatment consisting of endoscopic sinus surgery assisted with uh, GPS-like technology to uh, target her disease sinus. He really uh, accommodate the surgery to my lifestyle. He already told me you are going to follow your allergy treatments with me and now everything is working perfectly for me. We are at the forefront of medical technology to improve our patient outcome. We want our patient to recuperate faster and feel better. I'm breathing, I feel healthier, I feel younger. I highly recommend the sinus surgery for everybody that has chronic infections. Nuts are not only a source of healthful fats and protein, they also are a massive dose of omega-3 fatty acids that can help boost your brain power. Minimally invasive spine surgery is using technology and techniques in order to achieve goals of getting the patient out of the hospital quicker, less blood loss, less pain with their operation, quicker recovery, and easier return to normal function. We have technological advances for that. We have retractors, we have microscopes, we have surgical navigation tools, robotics. Uh, there are a lot of things that we use in order to achieve these goals. This is a model of a spine. We have also tissue layers, including the muscle, the paraspinous muscle. So in your low back, when your muscles hurt, these are the muscles that bother you. Then we've got a layer called the fascia, which is over the muscle. This represents subcutaneous fat, so fat under the skin, between the skin and the muscle, and then the skin. This is just a way to represent what minimally invasive surgery is or could be, and we often utilize this. But the whole goal with it is to avoid causing damage to these muscles and some of the tissues underneath. Minimally invasive techniques, we're trying to get rid of this incision, we're trying to get rid of the 
pulling the muscle away from the midline like this. And we have technology where we can utilize a simple cannula like this. We insert these into the patient through the skin. We get down to the level of the disc. And once we're there, we put dilators on there, which this is a dilator with a cannula or a portal over it. And now we can see through this small hole in the skin, which would be a few millimeters, we can get down here all the way to the disc. The whole goal is to, is to really decrease the harm you're doing to the patient while you're fixing their problem. People just don't have time to undergo a procedure and recover for three, four, five, six months, or even a year anymore. And their expectations don't allow that. People need to get back to the workplace. They need to get back to their own activities. They need to get back to taking care of their families and doing everything that makes them whole. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. I think people get the differences between a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and a counselor confused. So here are some of the major differences. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor. For the most part, their practices deal essentially with prescribing and then monitoring medications. Counselors have a master's degree in psychology or a related field. Psychologists have a doctorate in psychology. So my doctorate is in clinical psychology. I've had eight years of training in both the assessment and intervention of children and adolescents with a specialty in um, the emotional and behavioral problems that they present when they come in. You distinguish adolescent therapy from adult therapy in large part on what the developmental differences are and what the developmental task is for that age group. And that is, who am I? How do I fit into this world? When parents are debating whether or not to bring their kids in for therapy, the first piece of advice that I have for them is to sit down and spend some time talking with their child about what therapy means to them. My first session is always a consultation that doesn't cost anything, and so I, I want to use that time to um, really get across what it is that I do, but really, more importantly, to get an idea of how the child perceives his or her problems. Um, and what it is he or her wants out of treatment. What are his or her goals? I think it's really important to help adolescents understand who it is that they are and how best to fit in with other people. That's what makes those crazy years from 12 to 19 or 12 to 20 so critical. And so if I can help them get a greater understanding of that, developmentally speaking, then I'm doing my job. Thomas has a question for Dr. Robert Santella. Is there another treatment for my gallbladder besides surgery? Well, as opposed to a lot of other disease processes, kidney stones, etc., the common question is, are there any alternatives to a surgical removal of the gallbladder? And there really aren't. Um, bashing up the stones in the gallbladder with ultrasound has been tried, but actually what happens is those small fragments turn into larger stones, and there's really no medicines that we found that uh, help dissolve the stone. So really, right now, the only treatment is a surgical treatment. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. The ideal patients for dental implants are ones that have been through lots of restorative procedures and there were these procedures that just aren't predictable and so we were able to give them their third set of teeth with the use of, of dental implants. I had an accident when I was 10 years old and I fell down on my face and I dislocated my jaw and I didn't know that then but I started looking for 
the oldest doctor or the one with 35 years or more of experience. So I went to the facility in Gessner and I saw Dr. Metz and they said, this is the guy who's gonna have to be working on you. I had to decide if I wanted to go through with it and I did research, he graduated top in the class. So in Tico, we were able to move his upper jaw forward and set his lower jaw back so as to help line up his skeleton so that his teeth meshed together well. We as specialists in oral surgery are uniquely qualified uh, to provide these procedures. I just figured out this is the best facility, this is the best doctor, and I truly believe that, you know, Dr. Metz and his team, they know what they're doing. These patients, when we know when they come down the hallway, when we see them after this procedure, we see their level of confidence has gone up tremendously. We can tell by the smile on their face as well as their dress. They're dressed sharply and they're holding their chin up. You can certainly tell that uh, they are happier individuals afterwards. Technology today has you know, really revolutionized how we practice implant dentistry. We have uh, cone beam CTs which allow us to take a CT of the patient in the office uh, and in, in about 20 seconds we have 360 degrees of bone around uh, the implant. So we know ahead of time whether we need to graft and also the type of grafting that we need to do ahead of time. So patients are, are, are better prepared for the, uh, the experience and know more of what to expect afterwards. We are able to do this in, in, uh, in a safer fashion. Uh, and it's much more rapid. The procedures are much more rapid uh, and the recovery is much easier as well. Did you know that blueberries can help improve your memory? Consuming blueberries helps to improve your memory by protecting your brain from inflammation and boosting communication between your brain cells. Hi, I'm Jim Knox, and a lot of people have asked me, hey, what do you do away from the ballpark? Well, I am co-founder of a company called Identity Media Services. Our Emmy Award-winning production team can brand your company with videos, commercials, radio, and television, and our digital performance program specializes in lead generation, websites, and reputation management. So if your business needs a lift, give me a call, because as you know, it is tough to stay on top. Whew, that's gotta hurt. In an emergency, your most important need is time. Time saved in the hands of highly trained doctors and experienced emergency nurses. Time saved with advanced imaging and diagnostics to help find a solution quickly. No matter what hour or day, we are here for you. Because when your life is on the line, what matters most is time. Texas General Hospital, we care. I actually hurt my neck in a car accident when I was in my 20s and it's progressively gotten worse. My neck would stiffen up, it would hurt a lot and I'd put heat on it. I loved to read and I noticed I couldn't read anymore. So I had an MRI and found out that it was critical. That's when I realized I needed surgery and as a result found Dr. Bernay. When Marilyn came, she obviously was in tremendous pain, so in her situation, we had to move quicker so that we can bring her the comfort that she needed. My neck seemed to like lock up and it would hurt at times, especially if I'd read or I noticed, you know, trying to turn. I was driving, it was hard to do that, and it would depend on my activities, but it progressively just got worse through the years till, you know, I just could hardly stand it anymore. Her occurred from a degenerative process. What that is, is as the joint starting to age and uh, get degenerated, they can do so in such a way that abnormal tissue builds around this joint, bone spurs builds around this joint, and it causes pressure upon the adjacent nerves. She underwent her surgery uneventfully. We were able to clean up all the bone spurs and the disc tissue that was compressing on the nerve. There, she did have severe compression of the nerve, particularly at one of this level as it leaves the spine to go down the arm. He did a three-level fusion on my neck. And considering that in my age, I mean, I feel great. I feel like I could do cartwheels. <laughs> 
She was able to tolerate the intervention uneventfully. By the time she woke up, she was already able to notice the difference between the pain she was experiencing before and after that. He's a miracle worker. My neck is, is totally restored. I feel wonderful. The quality of life just seems a lot better because it don't hurt like I did. I can read. Uh, I could turn my neck better. I'm a little more comfortable driving. I had to go through the pain after the surgery, which takes a while to heal, but you know, that, hasn't, that wasn't that bad or that long. I, I feel like I've really turned a corner. Coming up on the second half of today's show, Interventional cardiologist, Dr. Annie Varghese, talks about hypertension. Family medicine doctor, Richard Honecker, addresses common health concerns in our medical minute. Cosmetic dentist, Dr. Guy Lewis, talks about his philosophy and approach to practicing dentistry. As well as more doctors from Forest Park Medical Center, utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. noticed something wrong in July of 2008. I actually went to a routine uh, doctor's visit for some breakout that I had, because um, I had used a different type of deodorant. And when they took my blood pressure, they said that it was, you know, unusually high. Hypertension, what can it cause? And some people think, well, the blood pressure is a little bit high, they can take a medicine, or maybe they just don't have to take it every day. A lot of people take this uh, idea of hypertension kind of casually, but we shouldn't, because high blood pressure can cause problems from stroke to heart attack to a kidney failure. So many things can be caused by that one word, hypertension. Ended up inevitably going to the emergency room like a couple of days after because my I just started feeling really dizzy, headache. It was as if my heart was actually hurting inside of my body. The blood pressure was 200 over 110. When I came to see her, her first words were, we're going to heal you. And I was like, yes, came to the right place. She has been committed and faithful to take her medicines and to take care of her body to protect her heart because high blood pressure can lead to many other things, especially cardiomyopathies or weakening of the heart, heart failure from diastolic heart failure or systolic heart failure. So we have prevented that in her and she's doing very well. Before, I would feel sluggish, tired, anxious a lot and a little headaches like that and then after you know once we started treatment on medicine different medicines you know I would feel better I would feel like I had energy I just felt better and good about myself. If the pressure is too high too, too much damage can occur in the organs we have to take it seriously and, and we just need to educate patients I believe. If patients really knew what it was all about they would come and get checked and take their medicine. I believe that Dr. Vargis has been blessed from the Lord with um, life and favor, you know, in her hands. So, and I just love that about her. Request an appointment on bestdocsnetwork.com. Let's talk about your bones. Bone health is very important, especially in women. You can get osteoporosis, that's very thin bones, and also there's mildly thin bones, which we call osteopenia. Now, what causes this, or who's at risk for bone thinning? Well, generally it's females. We often see it in Asian people, as well as people with very thin bones and low weight, under 126 pounds. People with red hair, blue eyes, freckles, and fair skin, they tend to get a lot of osteoporosis and a lot of osteopenia. The way you diagnose this is through a bone density scan. That should be done at your doctor's office. Now, if you do have osteopenia or osteoporosis, you need to be on calcium and vitamin D. Generally, 600 milligrams of calcium twice a day and 400 international units of vitamin D twice a day. If you take it all at once, that's not going to do the trick. Half of it will go out in your urine. You must take the daily dose and split it in half, take half in the morning and half in the evening. That way it will get into your bones very well. Menstrual bleeding is 
a common complaint in our patients and we have some women that are afraid to leave the house during their period. We've had patients who schedule their vacations around times that their period is going to be coming because they're afraid to be on vacation and have their period start. Some of our patients with heavy bleeding don't know when their period's going to come or how long it's going to last and they find that they are not willing to schedule exercise or vacation because they're afraid of being embarrassed by the amount of bleeding that they're having. We also have women who are bleeding so heavily that they become anemic and we have to give them iron tablets to try to improve that. Rarely we've even had patients whose bleeding is so heavy that they've had to have blood transfusion. And endometrial ablation gives us the option of treating those women and treating their heavy bleeding without resorting to more complicated surgery. The endometrial ablation allows us to destroy the lining of the uterus so that there is not that tissue there to bleed. Patients will have a procedure that lasts anywhere from one minute to 10 minutes. They will go home within two hours of the procedure being performed and they are back at work and normal activities the following day. Patients do have some cramping from the procedure, so they may take some ibuprofen, but they don't have the downtime that's associated with bigger, more complicated procedures. 20% of women who have an endometrial ablation will no longer have any periods at all, but the goal of endometrial ablation is to decrease the amount of bleeding so that it's more normal. Many of our patients suffer from heavy menstrual bleeding. That's a very common complaint that we have and many of those women are either young and having heavy periods but not quite ready for a hysterectomy or they're getting close to menopause and they know that if they can just get a few more years the bleeding will stop and they won't have to proceed with such a complex surgery. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. Dried plums or prunes are packed with polyphenols, a plant chemical that has been shown to boost bone density by stimulating your bone building cells. Carla has a question for Dr. Peter Morgan. What are the causes of venous insufficiency? The risk factors or causes of venous insufficiency are, um, first of all, genetic or hereditary. Patients that have uh, parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles that have large varicose veins are more likely to have disease that is caused by a genetic predisposition for the veins to get larger. The second risk factor is lifestyle issues including jobs, occupations, or hobbies that result in standing or sitting for long periods of time. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. Over 90% of diseases are caused or complicated by stress. Some ways to help deal with the stress in your life are exercising, listening to music, writing in a journal, or going for a walk. Well, the spa dentistry concept is something that I am considered one of the pioneers in the spa dentistry field because I started doing this probably about 20 years ago. It feels like a high-end spa. It feels more um, aesthetically pleasing. One of the things we started with was just, you know, how the staff was dressed. A lot of them dress, we dress in black, which is a little classier looking. When you walk in, you know, you can tell you're not in your typical dental office. I mean, most people are like, wow, this is unbelievable because it's, it's very nice. It's kind of like walking to someone's living room. The rooms that I treat patients in are more like suites. They're big rooms. They're not real closed in. They have couches in them so that family members or friends can come in and sit and be with them if they want to. But we also have TVs that are not only up in front of you where you can see them when you're sitting up in the chair, but we also have TVs in the ceiling 
so that when you're laying back in the chair, they're flat mounted, large screen TV, so you can watch TV, watch a movie, be relaxed, have your own headset, kind of go away, not have to hear all the sounds that are going on. We also have massage therapists that would could do foot massage or hand massage, hand paraffin treatments for ladies, especially guys like it too, but where they can dip their hands in the hot paraffin and, and get that done. Uh, just little touches that make it different, make it more of a relaxing experience. You know, most people it's like going to the dentist like a trip to the dungeon, you know, and it just doesn't have to be like that. It can be nice, it can be comfortable, it can be actually relaxing. And uh, we have a lot of patients to tell us, you know, I love coming here and I love getting this done. It's no, it's no big deal. It's not like, you know, I heard my parents talking about, this is totally different. So we've done a lot of different things to try to make it different from just the norm and different from what everybody else is doing and make it special, make them feel at ease. Drink green tea. It's packed with heart boosting and cancer stopping polyphenols that black tea doesn't offer. Green tea also delivers a boost of alertness, but from a smaller dose of caffeine than black tea. I was having so much pain, I couldn't wash my face, I couldn't blow my nose. The pain was excruciating, but it usually did not last for a long period of time. Whenever I would wash my face, it would be really excruciating. It would almost make me cry. I uh, went on for quite a while, went to the doctor and started taking pain medication for it, and I could tolerate it most of the time. But when I started seeing double, I thought, it's time to do something about this. I went to a, a neurologist and he referred me to Dr. Lee. When a patient uh, um, experiences a trigeminal neurologist, uh, they say it's the worst kind of pain they've ever felt. And I discussed to her options for treatment and she chose microvascular decompression. I'm an advocate for this procedure. You know, I think, um, Patients who have this condition need to know that uh, there is, you know, uh, a hope for them that there is something that they can actually fix their problem. The surgery was so successful that the double vision went away, the pain across my face went away, my teeth feel better, I can eat and I can brush my teeth without all the pain that I had had before. So after surgery, Anita did really well. The surgery was very successful. She didn't have any more facial pain, and uh, we were able to wean her off all her medications, and uh, she's been pain-free ever since. Dr. Lee has a very gentle bedside manner. He is very nice. He did a good job, I think. Life is, is much better after the surgery. Now that I don't have the pain, life is more enjoyable. It's, it's easier to talk, it's easier to eat, it's easier to smile, it's easier to do all the things that you do to keep your face clean and your teeth clean. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. Didn't find the doctor you're looking for on today's episode? head to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. There you can search our video library by topic, specialty, and doctor. The Best Docs Network, helping you find the right doctor and bringing medical education to you.